what Santa is going to bring you this year. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 38? 38. 38. Guys, today we're going to go over how to properly swing your bag. You would think there are gifts in here. No. It's actually my, it's my jiu-jitsu laundry. But you might want to put in a few extra weights to make sure your swing is most effective. I never played baseball, but I, I do believe my swing could be pretty uh, good. Don't break your shoulder, Fox. Okay. <laughs> so, guys, uh, we have a full program today. Um, what I want to talk about is, well, before we go there. Guys, I do read your comments, and I try to answer them. So, on the last episode, uh, somebody pointed out, uh, I called it a butterfly choke. Uh, I think uh, somebody, maybe Adolfo Peronda, one of our regular viewers, came up with it. And uh, somebody responded that... Uh, the, the proper name for that is Grape Crusher. The other way, Grape Popper. No, Grape yeah. Popper or Shoulder Crush. Don't worry, Enrique, I will not be crushing your grapes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Guys, I don't care what name you use. You can use whatever, if you wanna do a magical unicorn twist, I don't care if it helps you uh, believe in the technique. But I don't, I'm not a fan of those two names. And the reason for that is, because the technique is actually, if you do it the way I do it, it's actually choke. So it, it does hurt, but it's not crushing anybody's grapes and I think it's not popping their shoulder. It actually is a choke. Um, so it's actually when your hands are connected or you can have a figure four, um, actually the chest compression causes the choke. So that's how I use it, but you can call it whatever you want. And, and I'd like to say that we established it before. Guys, there's so many names out there. Everybody, you know, some schools, you know, have very creative names, 10th Planet, obviously. Uh, and, and some of those things make no sense to me, but again, if, if people can relate to the technique by the name, by all means do it. I try to have a descriptive uh, name for, for the techniques. Uh, several reasons, one is it makes it easier for everybody to remember, and number two is I have a hard time remembering Japanese names. Um, so guys, speaking of Japanese names, uh, I have a special program and I, I'm gonna explain to you why. So I want to go over is Kesagatame. Ooh, what is that? Headlock, escape. Okay, and the reason for that is um, I realized actually uh, one of my students competed last weekend, went nine and zero, very nice. But there was a guy in his division. It's intermediate. Uh, I think most of the guys were blue and purple, maybe. Uh, but uh, the guy was actually pretty good. But he wound up getting submitted by another guy by a headlock, Kesagatame. And I know like Josh Barnett has done that to others in tournaments, I've seen that. So I've realized that, that uh, you know, we teach it in fundamental classes more as a self-defense technique. But the reality is we don't drill it, but once we get past the fundamental, rarely people drill escapes for that. And the reason for that is because it's rare to see in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, it's very rare. It's very common in Judo, but very rare in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So that makes it, you know, when people get up through the ranks, they don't drill headlock escapes, uh, Kisagatama escapes. And generally speaking, when people get hit with it, it's by almost two sort of uh, extreme opposites. It's either somebody who knows nothing, like a schoolyard bully, just takes headlocks people and takes them down. And they don't know anything, and therefore you probably, if you have even a limited amount of training, you'll be able to wind up on their back or somebody that really knows how to do it well. Guys that have good... On this side. Huh? The other side, on this side. The expert. The police on that side. <laughs> Mike, get me my bag, please. <laughs> <laughs> Load something heavy in there, maybe a kettlebell. That's true, he did shoot me last episode. <laughs> so, guys, um, so you basically get subjected to it very rarely in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And usually it's gonna be by somebody who knows nothing, it's their first, second, third class, or somebody that's really good at it. And if you get somebody that's really good at it, that has some wrestling background, uh, catch wrestling, uh, or judo, it can be pure misery, pure misery, okay? So I've taught this over the last week at my school, both, both locations, because I want people to at least have an understanding an ability to escape, even if you get hit with it, you know, say if you know your purple brown belt and suddenly get hit with it, and you're like, oh man, uh, I think I tried to remember from you know my first six months of training. So let's go over that. All right, um, guys, start shooting your questions. Did I say Merry Christmas yet? Yeah. Merry Christmas. <laughs> All right. So guys, uh, 
When you get headlock and you want the guy to be, so, <laughs> oh, if you're enjoying this, uh, don't worry, I will enjoy the counters. So guys, I'm not gonna go over the one where you, if you can retract that arm, if you don't let them control that arm, so I'm dropping my elbow to the ground between his hip and me. If, if, uh, if you do this, this is gonna be an easy escape because basically all I do is just kind of scoot out and depending, you know, either get my head out or turn it to the other side. So let's, let's go over that once. I don't wanna to spend too much time on it because this one is pretty easy. It may hurt, you know, it's gonna scrape your ears and everything, but it's easy to get out. So if I can get my, so if I, yeah, if I can get my right arm back to speak, right, his, his, uh, my elbow is between his hips and me. So I just scoot, I just scoot, get to my knees. And now if he's holding on, what I'm going to do is just turn him to the other side and arm bar him. So that's pretty easy. Where it becomes difficult is where your opponent sits out and controls your arm. Okay. A lot of times, what they do is they their hips are slightly off. Yes, oh <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> so, so hi, their hips come off slightly off the ground. It's very subtle. You can't almost see it because now their weight is more on you as opposed to in the ground. So this could be really miserable and and not so easy to get out. So he can make two mistakes. Okay. One mistake is the head starts to drift up. Oh, now the shoe is on the other foot, okay? And the second mistake is where he opens his legs just a little too much. And when that happens, oh yeah, it's happening. Yes, it's happening. So that's the two mistakes, two major mistakes he can make is either the head comes up or the left leg flares out. If the head comes up, I bring my outside leg over his head and lock up an ugly triangle. It's brutal, guys. It's a, it's a combination of mangle uh, and choke, okay? So be really gentle to your training partners because it's, it's truly brutal. Go real slow. If he flares out his left leg, I just put my hook in and I start to drag him across. So those are two mistakes, all right? We gotta come back to them. But what I wanna talk about is what happens if they're not making either one of those obvious mistakes? If they are, it's not going to be difficult for you to escape. So this comes to the most important one, which is when they're not making any of the obvious mistakes. All right, so we're going to look at it from a couple different angles. So Enrique's, yeah, Enrique's head is down, so I, there's no way I'm going to bring my leg over, and I cannot get the hook in either. Guys, by the way, any time I can snake in my arm, that makes my escape easier. So if I can do this, any time as he's pulling, if I can do this, it's going to be a lot easier. But let's assume I cannot. All right? So, guys, uh, I want to protect my arm. My right arm is at risk. It's, you know, people just push down, and it's a shoulder lock. Uh, sometimes they trap it and, and start to arm bar you here. So I want to make sure, okay, I'm in a bad position, so i got to protect my right arm, which is at risk. I'm, so I'm basically going to, my left hand is going to grab my right wrist. Now, I'm going to make a connection, not at the waist. I'm going to make it up high. Now, I may kind of twist towards him. I may twist away just to create a little bit of instability. But the actual movement is I'm going to bring my feet close to my butt. And what I'm going to try to do is place Enrique's head on the floor. When I do that, guys, you'll see how easy it is to, to sweep them. If you get the sweep, great. You don't have to do. You don't have to go uh, go back to the other two. Okay, we're gonna look at it from a different angle. Uh, here, yeah, let's go here. So you can see my my movement. So again, I protect my right hand. Okay. So as uh, I I don't see you can you have to evaluate pretty quickly. So his head is not up. I cannot get my hook in. So what I'm going to do, sometimes you can twist towards him or a little bit away from him, it doesn't matter. But the movement itself is to bring your feet close. Guys, you're not trying to drag him across. This is, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not moving his hips at all. What I'm trying to do is put his head on the floor. When I put his head on the floor, he becomes very light. So you, try, you know I have a bad back, but it does, guys, if you, 
if you, um, the higher arch you can make, the easier it's gonna be, all right? So again, I protect my right, uh, right arm, and now maybe twist to him, place my feet, and arch. Now, he, he has no choice, and then I start to turn to him. Okay? So, that's the most important one, guys. Because this one, even if it fails, opens up one of the two mistakes that we talked about at the beginning. Okay? So, what we're going to go over is, I'm going to start with this one. So, if they're making an obvious mistake, you attack that mistake. If they're not making an obvious mistake, this is what causes... They have to adjust. It might be a, a subtle adjustment, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over what makes the adjustment vulnerable for them, okay? So, um, yeah, one of my legs here. So, as I do this, as I fail, and he, I, as I, as I uh, come back, so basically, it failed. I just realized it was too much effort. I turn my hips to him. Whether I'm gonna whether I'm gonna get a hook or whether I'm gonna bring it over the head, when you turn it, so as it's failing, guys, don't don't do this. So arch, bring it back, and now he's gonna shrink. No, it's too late. So as I'm hitting him with the arch, I'm coming back. My hips are already on the side. They're already ready to, to hit. So either case, whether I'm looking for the hook with my left leg or my left leg over his head, either case, you have a shorter distance, okay? I just bring my leg over. As soon as my leg comes over, guys, I start to scoop up Enrique's far side arm. I don't want his arm to escape now. So I start to feed it, and I'm gonna connect an ugly triangle, guys. So from here, guys, you can squeeze your legs together and it's, guys, be very gentle. This is very, very brutal, very, very effective. Um, if I see that mistake, you, guys, if, if his head is up high and you can get that down right off the bat, do it. But a lot of times, if you have somebody that's got skill, they won't make that mistake. You have to hit him with the arch first and then go after the adjustment. Let's look at the other possibility. So let's look at, guys, again, so as I'm doing this, his head came up, that's gonna be my default. So as his head starts to come up, guys, I switch, I switch my hand from being behind and protecting my right arm to in front of his face. This clears. Now my left leg starts to bring him. So guys, I don't I'm crunched up here. So I start to arch, which breaks his, his grip and it starts to put him in a very difficult situation. I will try to keep his left arm. I don't want him to, to retract that to possibly try to unravel my, my legs, okay? Guys, it doesn't matter. If you can cross your ankles, it's still, it's still a submission. So it doesn't have to be an ugly triangle. It could be an ugly diamond, okay? Now, the other possibility that you're gonna get is that instead of his head coming up, his head stays, his head stays low, and he opens up his legs. Guys, as soon as I see it, my foot comes in, okay? Now, this hook is marginal, all right? So I'm gonna reinforce it with my right leg coming under, stretching out, and now, guys, I don't want him to slip out to the back. Yeah, I want him to suffer, so yeah, go ahead. So I start to arch, right? So I start to arch, because now he will give you his back. He wants to do this. But I'm going to make him do it. I don't want that, him to escape that arm. No, don't worry, Enrique. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> All right, let's look at it from another angle. So, yeah, let's, let's make sure they, they can see. Yep, they can, that's the same angle. Okay. So, again, guys, if he's, not, if he's making an obvious mistake, I'll hit it. But if he's not, I, I know from experience, I'm going to be just short here. All right? So when I see that, I'm going to arch. And as he's adjusting, my foot comes in. 
As my foot comes in, guys, I may reinforce it with my hand, but for sure, I'm gonna help with the bottom leg. And now, now I don't wanna slip out at the back. Go ahead, put the iron fist, let's see. You know this is called diesel squeeze. <laughs> no. Help. All right, guys. So, long story short, learn how to escape the headlock. It is one of the, I'm sure in the Gracie University system, this is one of the biggest things because at least based on what I see in the movies, schoolyard bullies and so forth, what I remember from my childhood, it's a headlock. That's a very common, but they don't know anything. So chances are you can retract that hand. If you cannot, and you get a guy that actually knows what he's doing, guys, it will be pure misery. It will be very difficult to get out, but it also, if he's not, if he's making an obvious mistake, leg is flared out, bring the hook in. If the head is high, bring the leg over. If he's not making the obvious mistake, guys, spend the most time drilling the arch, the bridge, where you're putting his head behind you, and now they become light, all right? Actually look over your head, and then once, he, once his feet and hips come off the ground, you turn. Guys, you will thank me for this. Mike, we have any questions? So far we have everybody saying Merry Christmas, <laughs> and John Grafter is saying Enrique should have stretched. He should have. I did. No, you didn't. He was late, then, then he plays around with his phone. What? Che checking on the latest what? news on Instagram. <laughs> Where's that plastic The latest gun? memes. The latest memes on Instagram that they keep and up with the times. He always said, uh, for him, no questions today, just Merry Christmas to you gentlemen, and thank you for all the patience and help you've offered us so far. Merry Christmas, Piotr. Guys, it's, it's really good. I, I, you know, like, I, it's, it's, it's amazing. Some of you guys have been with us probably, it's uh, yeah. well over two years now. You know, wait, more, more than that. It's been two years, almost, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we started, I think, Before. May of, 19, so two and a half years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's good to see the familiar faces. And a lot of peers asking. Well, I don't see you, but I, 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 some of you guys I know from Facebook or from actually meeting face to face at a tournament or a seminar. So I can, I can picture the, uh, the faces. The familiar usernames. Yes. True. And a lot is asking, what do you do if you catch his arm from behind? Mm. Oh, I, I just pull. So if I, if I, I, I do that any time that, that, you know, if I can catch, whether it's standing, I use this standing as well, but let's, let's stay with this. So anytime, if I, yeah, this is, yeah, this is going to be a lot easier. It's almost like, but when you do, don't, don't let him see, go, let's, let's, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, we're doing this. Okay. No, it's okay. What I do don't you want me to do. Go ahead. Connect. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, this is just such a strong grip. I do it standing as well. Like so, a lot of times, if if uh, you know, if, if 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 I have sort of body lock and 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 uh, uh, I don't really have a body lock. I have the seatbelt grip. So what I'll do is is I I'll pull as he pulls back. I re exaggerate this. Now his only possibility is to just yeah, that's not gonna that will not happen. Um, his only possibility is to, to swim out that arm, which is not that easy. So guys, when you, when you thwart the threat, thwart the threat, T -T -T. say it. <laughs> T -T -T. <laughs> Triple T. <laughs> so guys, when you th thwart the threat, <laughs> say, it, say it fast head times, immediately go into an offensive mode. What, what does that mean? That means it's now that I'm no longer worried about the headlock. I now start to arch because now I want him to keep that arm where it is so he cannot free the arm and, and, and twist because sometimes you get a guy that's, uh, you know, so, uh, yeah, so from here, let's, let's, no, yeah, so go ahead, pivot. yeah, you get a guy that's kind of, you know, yeah, this is not a bad, this, guys, if, if this is the result, if you're being headlocked and this is the result, it's fine. A again, being headlocked, if you are on the bottom of somebody that knows what they're doing, it's misery. It's pure misery. So if 
the result is that he kind of escaped and you're on top. Anything where you basically put him in guard where you wind up on top is good. But my personal feeling is that once he made me feel that miserable, I'm going after him now. So I like to keep, I start to, once I, once I th don't arch before, all right, because you're fighting his grip. And, you know, as long as he's kind of gripped and, and can, he can keep you kind of, you know, uh, curled in. Um, and some guys really, really, you know, good putting their weight on you. Uh, but once you sort of either get the hook in or get the head, uh, leg over the head, immediately start arching because now you want, you want him to sort of start to be stretched out and not be able to do anything about it. And one last question before we close out. Uh, Kane is asking, hey coach, could you explain the different scenarios of mount escapes? When would you use the kipping escape versus the elbow? Um, I usually don't use kipping escape. Uh, and the reason for that is it's, it's, it's a lot of like this, this movement, like a fairly fast movement on my lower back where your legs kind of come up and, and down. Right. Yeah, this is, this is not good for my back. But the, uh, the idea is um, uh, I usually use UPA, which is basically the arch that you learn in the first couple of months of training, or elbow escape. For me, uh, again, the distinction is between uh, the UPA, meaning uh, this one, So where you, yeah, where you trap one arm, one leg, an arch, that I would use primarily, you know, in a self-defense or MMA scenario where the guy is striking because their motivation is different from, from, uh, from uh, uh, just purely grappling. Um, elbow escape is more effective when, um, uh, uh, when you're in a grappling scenario where you don't have to worry about getting hit in the face. So again, in this MMA or self-defense scenario, the guy's gonna be more upright because he's looking to just start to, to hit, hit down, which makes him vulnerable to come forward. You trap your arm, they roll. Okay, so UPA, you know, just basically a bridge arch, uh, I would use in a self-defense or MMA scenario. It's probably the most effective one in that scenario. Uh, in a pure grappling scenario, I use the elbow escape because then the guy is more, you know, he's more kind of like low, low down and not, work, not interested in hitting you, more interested in keeping that position. So I find the elbow escape to be most effective. If you want to really get some good kipping tips, um, follow this guy, Shy Aces, on Instagram um, or, or Facebook. Uh, he was actually doing this stuff and he's posted some videos of him, you know, competing back. You know, he competed against some big names back in the day. Man, I I, I cornered him back in 2008 or nine for ADCC trials, back when he was still a blue belt. But he's competed against some heavy hitters, you know, um, and and that's one of one of his go-to moves. Uh, you know, he's he he's uh, you know I mean 220, but you know he anytime I mount him, as soon as I feel the kipping, I'm getting off, guys. I'm not waiting. For him because he's really good at entering the legs from there so shy aces on instagram and facebook um check it out you know he's he's got some good tip uh kipping tips and we're out of time guys so guys i will see you next friday new year's eve 30th Th oh no third wait th what's today 31st 31st yes yeah. <laughs> just, just don't say nothing so uh next friday for the last episode of the year and then we start season three four Shy S H Y. Why what? Oh. <laughs> Will you just okay. please? S H Y and then a separate word Aces. A C E S. Like Aces, you know, Aces of Clubs. Aces of, you know, like in the card game. Aces of Hearts. Yeah, really nice guy. Um, anyways, um, so we'll see you next week, guys. Share, subscribe, uh, like. like. I don't know what else you can do. Binge watch. Yes. We have a lot of episodes. See you next week, guys.